most of the world's populations live in cities surrounded by a man-made environment. And the quality of city life rests on the shoulder of easy access to safer, affordable, and sustainable mobility. But little is known of the history and challenges of the mobility system in urban centers. These seemingly invisible mobility elements speak to us through travel behavior, street environment, the built environment, and mobility facilities. When, it ex when the subways opened at Shepherd and Finch in 1974, there was a political and a planning culture here that was able to capture the potential that the subway stations created with plans for a, uh, a North York downtown at Shepherd and an uptown at Finch stations. At the same time, there was a plan in place for a, a mid-block uh, subway station at the North York Centre, where we are right now. Mixed use leads to the most lively public realm. Residential uses alone cannot uh, sustain the restaurants, the shopping, which uh, both residences and offices together can contain. Areas that are only offices, like the financial district, are not lively on the weekend. Areas uh, like the uh, uh, Scarborough Civic Centre or even uh, St. Clair, which are mostly residential and don't have the, uh, uh, the office buildings, don't create the truly urban, lively uh, uh, public realm, which is one of the big goals for the, uh, for the North York Centre plan. The, the North York Centre was one of the first secondary plans that actually talked about uh, sort of a, a combined master plan that had both uh, transportation capacity, built form capacity, density numbers, and, um, and also dealt with where parklands were supposed to be. So it was a, a sort of a master plan for how a whole neighborhood was going to be built. And that was sort of rare with dealing with secondary plans for, for a neighborhood in the city of, of North York or in Toronto at the time. A ring road was inserted both on the east side and on the west side, currently Doris and Beecroft, uh, which uh, uh, was seen as an address then for high density residential. That pattern of large commercial buildings on Young Street and, uh, uh, and tall uh, residential uh, behind along the ring road is the pattern for most of the neighborhood. Master plans generally make assumptions about what people want, causing such plans to be brittle in the face of economic, demographic, and social changes. Building capacity for an unforeseen future is not an easy task. Following the real estate boom, the market collapsed in the 1990s. When the economy came back in 1994, 95, uh, there was a, a, a growing market for uh, uh, residential uses and most of the growth in the centre since that time has been residential. The transportation network that was developed in, um, in the early um, 1990s for this uh, plan um, was sort of based on keeping the car um, out of the out of the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, but since that time, um, there's a lot more modes of transportation that people are using. More, a lot more people are walking, using bicycles, using transit. And with the good public transit along the Young Corridor, um, people from the North York Center area use it and have good access, but the people from the neighborhoods also should be using it. There are also social, demographic, and technological changes that are affecting transportation. We need to be thinking about how the street is changing as well to accommodate people getting around in different ways. The millennials are much less interested in private car ownership than previous generations. And so there are a lot of options for uh, young, that young people are pursuing instead of owning a car. And those include car sharing, riding a bike or walking. the changes that I would make to the, the North York Centre and Transportation Network Plan would be to, um, I think, better link the neighbourhoods uh, with the North York Centre so that people who live in the single family neighbourhoods on both the east and west side of the centre would have better access to the centre um, by walking down their streets and having better connections across both Beecroft and Doris. That Finch corner and that part of the, uh, 
the, uh, of the district doesn't really have a strong pedestrian focus, uh, re reusing those lands uh, uh, and creating a different kind of development around it could, uh, could really transform the north end of the, of the North York Centre. Well, obviously, the environmental assessment to rethink Young Street with the goal of uh, providing <clears throat> uh, bicycle lanes on Young Street is a big, uh, is a, is a big transformation for Young Street uh, and for the centre. A project like the Finch Bicycle Corridor, which connects to Seneca College and nearly to York University, uh, is the beginning of a transformation for the North York Centre on bicycles as transportation, not just bicycles for recreation. At the dawn of new mobility and with new technology and creative design, North York is again leading the city towards a new mobility ecosystem. Multimodal systems are being redefined with the introduction of a new innovative mobility planning process that incorporates shared mobility and on-demand options. Addressing the current gap between different modes of transportation an award-winning concept of eco-mobility points is currently underway to combine all modes of mobility into one-stop service points. A complete street is simply a street that plans for all ages and abilities no matter how you get around. There are four key goals that complete streets are aiming to achieve. The first is to get pe more people walking and cycling. The second is to improve safety by reducing collisions and the severity of collisions. The third is to improve the experience of people walking, cycling, and taking transit. And the fourth is really broader goals of improving air quality, uh, health, and retail sales. North York has grown very quickly, and now we need to think about how to make it more livable.